Hey guys, Matt here and welcome back to another video. It's been some time, but welcome to 2022. I have some very exciting content that I'll be releasing to you guys and bringing you more and exciting content and not only that, hopefully better produced content and quality. I have accepted a new job recently as an infrastructure and desktop support officer, which is really, really exciting. But there's a little bit of a challenge that I recently faced with myself. Supporting multiple schools, we have multiple servers and multiple deployment servers. Some are based on MDT, some are based on SCCM, and some of them are completely custom built using MDT, WDS, the works. However, the previous technician had set this up, we've got to adapt to and learn how to use. Recently, I've had to dis discover that I've had to buy several USB sticks, and at the moment, I have a collection of them, about 30 to be precise, and I keep buying more and more. This is becoming a huge problem because it's costing me more, and as well as that, I need to constantly have those USBs, and I can't just simply reformat them. So recently, I discovered a program called Easy to Boot, which has changed my life for the better. For example, I now have over 132 boot sticks, boot images on the one stick, which is absolutely insane. The fact is, I now load all of my operating systems on the one stick. You may have also heard of other products like Ventoy or something called Yumi. These are great products. However, Easy to Boot provides an extra support utility that I absolutely love. These are called image petitions. Image Petitions allow me to create an image petition file and load my installer onto that petition. What that then allows me to do is I can switch between different petitions on the drive and be able to have one single USB drive like it acts as a normal USB drive. And we'll show you a little bit more today in today's demonstration. Having one USB stick has absolutely changed how I do a lot of my tasks and a lot of my jobs today. Simply put the ISO onto your USB stick, create an image petition if you so desire, and you're able to boot off like a normal USB drive. Some USB installers, would you believe it or not, actually require read and write access to when they're installing. Traditional media installers such as Ventoy or Yumi don't have that feature, and sometimes you may discover that the USB or the ISO is no longer detected, and this can stuff up your installer. Thankfully, having the installer that we have at the moment provides some really, really helpful, useful utilities and also some really helpful information and resources as well. So, without further ado, let's get started. So what we're going to need for this project is you're going to need a USB at least 64 gigabytes or higher. You're going to need access to a computer with Windows 10 or higher. And also you're going to need access to the internet. We'll show you how to create a USB installer very easy. And the process only takes a few minutes. So without further ado, let's get started. So, okay guys, so let's get started. So what we're going to need for this project is we're going to need a 64 gigabyte USB drive or higher in space. I would highly recommend you choose a Samsung branded USB drive. These are called the T-Bars and I absolutely love these to bits because they are super reliable and super flexible, redundant, everything in the works. They are absolutely fantastic and I suggest that you guys get one. The other one that I like to use as well is a SanDisk USB drive and again, I would suggest that they are USB 3 or higher. In this situation, my Samsung drive is USB 3 and it's perfect for what we need to do. So we've only got one take and only one shot at this, so hopefully we get this right. So we're gonna unbox our USB drive, we're gonna unplug it, from the packaging and of course of course we're going to plug it into our computer now my machine is set up slightly different with wall mounted machines but with wall mounted monitors but the other thing as well that's crazy is the desktop isn't actually under my desk it is actually inside the closet in my office so none of the cables run under the floor but they all the cables run under the floor and they absolutely work beautifully so, on my desktop here, we have got my USB drive detected here on the machine. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that we notify what our USB drive is here. So this is the G drive here, and we've got our Samsung USB drive. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go to our internet browser, and we're gonna search for easy to boot. We'll give that a few seconds to load. 
Now, you may go to easyboot.com, but it will automatically redirect you to Easyboot XYZ as they've recently updated their content. We'll click accept here on the website and to basically install it. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna to go to our downloads page here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on download easy to boot and we're gonna need two files. We're going to go ahead and use the download easy to boot for Windows 10 for users to make the easy to, easy to boot USB drive. We'll click on this one. And we're also going to go ahead and we're going to need something called the easy to boot zip, easy to boot MPI for making image partition files, which is something I mentioned earlier. So I've already got both of these files downloaded, which makes our job a little bit easier. So what we're going to go ahead and do, I'm just going to grab, grab, grab it across on my system here. Actually, hopefully I do have it here somewhere. So what we're going to go ahead and do is, as you can see, I've already got the files here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on the make underscore easy to boot exe, right click and click run as administrator. Now you'll see that you have this really cool little easy petition, this little um, window here, which basically makes it really, really easy to create your easy to boot drive. All we've got to go ahead and do is click on one button that says make the easy to boot drive and make sure that you selected the correct drive. In my case, it's the G drive, the Samsung USB drive, a 59 gigabyte Samsung flash drive. I've got to hit make easy to boot drive or click OK and let's let the magic start happening. So as you'll see here on the screen here, you'll have a terminal window and it will go through the whole process of automate. It will automate the process and it may ask you a few little things along the way. For example, you'll get a prompt that looks like this. So we're going to click OK to allow the drive to be formatted. Okay, so it's created two partitions. So I'll explain in a minute why it creates these two partitions, but you have your primary partition, which is where you store all your files. And then you have the other one, which is where we go ahead and put something called the AGMF boot. I'm gonna say yes, and that's where it's gonna be going onto the partition two. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to do UEFI booting with easy to boot. It's basically a really, really cool little file manager that's UEFI based. And this will be going on the second partition, which is that E to B underscore partition two. We'll, hit, we'll put Y there for yes, and we'll hit enter. This is gonna go ahead and download these files from the internet, so it may take a little bit of time based on your internet connection. So I'm gonna just, we're just gonna keep going through this, we'll just pause and we'll continue. Okay, so as you can see, it's now gone ahead and downloaded the file and it's gonna go ahead and extract it. The other thing that we are going to put on our USB drive is something called Ventoy. So would you believe it or not, Easy to Boot actually has had um, Ventoy as a part of the as a part of its installer and a part of the installing installation process. You can actually include Ventoy, and again, this is a specific plugin for Easy to Boot and set up for Easy to Boot. And we'll show you guys a little bit later about how this works. So I'm going to put in Y for yes, and I'm going to hit Enter. And again, this is going to download those files. And thankfully, this shouldn't take too long. Again, it will vary based on your internet connection. So now what we're going to do. Is we're going to say yes to copy all of the files and that has downloaded everything it needs we'll push yes we'll, we'll put y in there and we'll push um, enter so now we're going to hit ok enter and this is going to go through its final procedure and as you can see the drive is now successfully created so if i hit enter you'll now see that we have two partitions on our machine here we have our samsung usb and we have our easy to boot partition two this now is ready to go so Let's go ahead and add a few ISOs onto our USB drive. We'll go through our Samsung USB here and you'll see how we have an ISO folder. We'll go through the ISO folder and what we'll do is we'll add a Windows 10 image. So I'm gonna go through the ISO folder, Windows, Windows 10, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag in my Windows 10 21H2 you, uh, ISO here. Now again, it will vary on the speed. If you've got a really fast USB drive that's USB 3, this should only take a few minutes. And as you can see in this particular example, it's only gonna take about two minutes. So again, this is how we allow for easy to boot to boot off our, UI, our ISOs. However, we are gonna also allow this to use image partitions as well, and also make this compatible for all systems, legacy UEFI, uh, but again, based on different partitions. So we'll let that copy across. It's gonna take another one minute and 45 seconds. Five more seconds to go, and then the USB drive is almost ready to be um, used on a machine. So the last thing we need to go ahead and do is we go back to our main directory here on the USB drive. We're gonna right click on make this drive continuous, Run right click and run this as administrator. Okay, that's now done. So what this has basically done is it's made the drive, as it says, continuous, and this allows for us to have new ISOs recorded into the system. 
As well as that, it adds, if you've got Linux files and things like that, it automatically will pre-index them, so it knows what the files are. A really, really good little program. So let's go ahead and let's put this into our machine and let's go ahead and boot off this USB drive. All right, guys, so this is finally the moment of truth to show you guys how cool this works. Here I have my test laptop, the Dell Inspiron E5530, and this is a laptop that I use for a lot of my image testing and also use for a lot of tests with my image petitions and also with easy to boot. I dedicated this machine deliberately as I have to format the drive quite often, so I don't want to be using one of my personal machines, especially when I'm testing. So this is a perfect example of how I test a lot of the images and also as well test my USB drives to make sure that they operate correctly. So here is our freshly formatted 64 gigabyte USB drive. So what we're gonna do, of course, most technicians would know what to do, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug the device into the computer. We're gonna turn the device on and we're gonna get ready to boot. All Dells will be using F12 to enter the boot menu. We're gonna to go to our UEFI Samsung flash drive and we're gonna press enter. This is now going to load the AGMF UEFI file manager. This is how we allow for UEFI booting with easy to boot. It, it does take a few seconds as it needs to figure itself out and also get the system information. For example, this system may have secure boot switched on, so it needs to figure out that particular part. So this is our main menu with the AGMF um, AG file manager. And basically, it's a big, awesome manager for all of our files. So like we did earlier when we copied our ISO across, we're gonna go into the Windows directory and we're gonna to go to Windows 10. And as you can see here, we have our ISO ready to be loaded. We'll select it by pressing enter. And we'll go ahead and select boot windows from ISO as a .iso win file. We'll press enter and that will now load the drive. I'm gonna select install windows without an auto unattended. Now, easy to boot supports auto unattended. And what this means is essentially you can create a configuration file to say to Windows, okay, load Windows with the following settings and completely avoid having to manually specify settings. Thankfully for us, we use something with MDT and this is already pre-staged for us. So there's no more intervention required. This may take a few seconds to boot based on the speed of your USB drive and also the speed of the USB device, the USB hub on the actual device itself. For example, this is a USB 3 port on this machine. This is a dedicated port here for this laptop. So this shouldn't take too long to load. Okay guys, so with our image partition freshly ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and load it now. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to go back to our main ISO directory here, and we're going to locate a program called switch underscore E to B. I'm gonna right click on that one and hit run as administrator. We'll then go ahead and select yes. And in a few seconds, we'll be prompted with a box that looks like this. This is a menu that shows all the image partitions that I have got prepared. I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the one that I wanna use. We'll double click, we'll select okay. And then in a few seconds, we should see that this drive automatically closes and opens up. So let's go ahead and reopen up the file explorer. Can you see here now how we have a new image partition? This is now a new drive. So essentially, the two drives that we had a minute ago have now disappeared. And this appears as a normal, regular USB drive, like you'd have in your machine. So let's go ahead and let's boot this up on our test machine. Okay guys, so like we did before booting off our USB drive, we're gonna do the exact same process. I'm gonna turn the machine on and get ready to spam F12, so that way we can open up the boot menu. Pushing F12, we're now gonna go ahead and load up our image partition. So basically what we're gonna do here now is I'm gonna select the UEFI USB, press enter, and this is now gonna go ahead and load that image partition. Now the screen looks a little bit funny here and that's totally normal behavior to see with easy to boot. It's based on how the partition was made, but this still acts and boots as a UEFI partition. Some machines have a habit of doing this, but that's okay. This will still normally boot up into the Windows installer or whatever your boot media may be. It will still boot, it may just take a few extra seconds and it may look a little bit interesting, but don't panic, it will still be booting. In a few seconds time, we should hopefully see that the Windows installer screen comes up on this machine. As you can see, it's gone ahead and done that. So we now know that this is booting correctly. So again, just give it a few seconds as this may take 
a few seconds to load and look a little bit interesting, but it totally works and is up and running correctly. Anyway, guys, thank you all very much for watching this video. Do like and do subscribe. Share a comment in the comment section below, and we look forward to updating you guys really soon. Thanks all for watching, and we'll see you next time.